Hi there. We are going to take a look at our Yahtzee program from before. Uh, but this time what we're going to do is instead of using an int variable to represent a dice, we're going to make an object version of dice. So we already have already created this. So what we're going to do is just kind of walk by it, section, or walk through it section by section, explain what it does, how we can use it. And then we made this as a separate program, the dice tester, which is blank right now just to test it see how the dice object works. And then finally, we'll take a look at the Yasi program that's rewritten uh, in order to accommodate this dice object rather than an int variable. So first thing you notice is we have a little comment block at the top, just describing what this program is and how it works. Uh, and if we scroll real quickly through, you'll notice there is no main method. When you are creating an object, there is no main class because you're not making a runnable program you're describing to the computer what a dice object is. So you're teaching it what something is. You're not really asking the computer to do anything yet. So there is no main method. Now, a very important thing to start out with is when you are creating an object, the name of your file is the name of the class in the file and also the name of the object as you go forward. So if we were to call this something like dice uh, program, then every time I would want to make a dice, I'd have to name it dice program, which is a little bit obnoxious. So if we were looking at the string class, for instance, it would be called public class string. And when we create strings, we call them strings. So whatever we want to call our object is what we name our file. Uh, so dice.java and then public class dice. Now, there's three things we really concern ourselves when we're talking about objects. The first is Instance variables, also called data members. So these are the pieces of information that describe that object, that make it unique from something else. So if we think about a dice, there's really only two pieces of information we really need about it. One is how many sides it has. Uh, the standard dice is six-sided, but there are 20-sided dies and four-sided dies. But we want to know how many sides does it have. And then also, whatever the current value is that's facing up. So I roll the dice. It may have six sides, but right now it's showing a four, All right? So we have this section labeled out instance variables, and then we've created two of them. It's worth noting here, these are private. 99.9% .9 of the time, data members inside of a class are private, meaning that only this object can see that information. Anything outside of the object that wants to gain access to it needs to go through what we're gonna call an accessor method. And we'll talk about those in a moment. So by default, we make these private. You'll also notice static is not included here. Now that doesn't mean that uh, objects never use static variables, but they usually don't. Static variables uh, describe the class as a whole, as opposed to a specific instance of the class. So for example, if we were talking about human beings, we might say that each human being has a different name. That would be a private string name. But all human beings uh, have a number of chromosomes where we have, um, say, uh, are, uh, we're all part of the same kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So me as an individual human and you as an individual human have different names. And that information would be a private data member. But we're both a homo sapien. That could be a piece of static information. And we can get into that uh, later, but I just want to point out that we don't include static when we're making data members for the most part. Uh, you'll also notice that for the dice, we have this final variable in here. So the number of sides of a dice, once it's created, that's it. We don't change the number of sides. So even though it is a variable, this number is not going to vary. So a final variable doesn't change its value once it is assigned. And we indicate that in the name by using all caps. So stylistically, when you see a variable in all caps, that usually means it's a final variable or the program writing it didn't know the stylistic rules and, and put it in all caps anyway. So that's the only instance variables for the dice. Let's keep going. And we go to our next section, which is constructors. When we have an object, because objects usually contain multiple pieces of information, they're a little bit harder to assign value to as opposed to a single variable with a single piece of information. So we have these special methods called constructors that just help give that information to the data members. Now, we actually have two constructors here. Uh, one is a default constructor that has no parameters, and another is an overloaded constructor. So we're overloaded. We have two of the same method that uh, takes in the number of sides. I want to point out too with constructors, you notice there is no return type. It just says public 
and then the name of the class. So public dice, no return type. When we make a dice object, uh, the constructor returns an instance of dice. So there's no need to add that extra return type because it's already uh, assumed by the constructor. Very important is the name of the constructor has to match the name of the class. So as long as you're doing that, you should be okay. Uh, when we go into these actual constructors, you can see the only thing we're doing is assigning values to those data members. Now, sometimes we might do something a little bit more complicated, but again, 99% of the time, the purpose of a constructor is just to assign values to data members. So in this case, uh, we're gonna say the default dice has six sides and we start out with the value of one. Uh, in the overloader constructor, we allow the parameter coming in to determine the number of sides, but that's all the constructors do, they're very simple. So that's uh, a, enough right now that I think we can jump over to our dice tester and try creating our first dice. So just like if I were to make a string, I'd say string X equals, you know, say cat. I could start out by saying uh, dice B. I'm just gonna put a semicolon in there. Oh, and I forgot my semicolon of that line. So you see, I don't have an error message. So it knows what a dice is. If I were to spell it wrong, like douse D, I'm gonna get an error message. It's gonna say, I don't know what a douse or a, a doce is, but I know what a dice is because I'm in the same package with the dice.java file. Now, when we are creating an instance, an actual instance and initializing a value, we have to call the constructor. Strings are kind of special where you can assign a direct value, but uh, you might recall that when we make a scanner object, SC equals, we have to call a new scanner. All right, so there's a constructor and the constructor takes a parameter. So if we wanted to talk to like the input stream from the keyboard, we would give it the system.in as the parameter. And then I also, uh, in this case, need to import. So I'm gonna hit fix imports. I need to import the scanner class. So I've just told this program, import scanner.java, where the, the compiled version of it, so that I can go and look up how scanners work. And now this line works fine. It says I can refer to a scanner, I know what they are. And in order to make an instance of one, I need to call the constructor. In this case, I need to send a parameter. And then we use this reserve word new to say make space for. So just make room in memory for this thing I'm creating. And because objects can be of various sizes, one object might have one data member, another object might have 10,000. So because we don't really know how big they're going to be up front, that new tells the computer, hey, you're gonna to need to make some space and the constructor will tell you how much space. So let's try making a dice equals a new dice. There's our default constructor. And then why don't we do a second one? I'll call this a D20 and we'll say make a 20 sided die. So now we have created two dice, uh, but let's go and see what dice can actually do. So we'll go back to our dice.java program and scroll down, this is the third part. So remember, there's three really important parts of um, making an object, instance variables, what is this thing? Constructors, how do I make it? And then lastly, all your class methods, the things that it can do. Now, uh, in parentheses, we have getter and setter methods here. Getter also known as accessor methods. So we have these private data members that are inaccessible to anything outside of this, this dice class. But that's kind of silly. What's the point of a dice if I can't actually see the value on it? So the way that we get access to those data members is through accessor or getter methods. And they're really simple. Uh, they just return a value. Now you might be thinking, well, why bother writing a get value? Why not just, that's public, why not just make value public? The issue there is then you have direct access to that variable, meaning somebody outside of the dice class could actually change the value of the dice directly without having to go through one of these methods. So this is just kind of a layer of abstraction that an information hiding that secures that data a little bit better. Then we can be a little bit more prescriptive as to how we allow access to those data members. So we have a get value, getter method that just returns it. We have a set value, a setter method that allows you to set the value to a particular thing. So think, uh, you know, people that have, um, uh, you know, the, that play craps, for example, often will set the dice in their hand to a specified value. They might say, always try to make it 
uh, you know, six, six in their hand before they roll just as a habit. So being able to set the value is something that we're going to allow people to do. Now, we also have a get method for the get num sides, but there is no setter value for num sides because it's a final variable. Once it has a value, that's it. Can't change it. Now, we also have this roll method. So the roll method is creating a random number based on the number of sides and assigning it to the value. So this is what it's like to roll the dice, but you can call this roll method. And the nice thing here is that this is not a super complex line, but it's a line of code that doesn't need to be in our Yahtzee program. This is something that uh, dice do, dice get rolled. Yahtzee just happens to play with dice. We don't need Yahtzee to have a, uh, a random number generator to roll dice. That's something a dice should do. And the last thing we have here is this two string method. So two string is actually an inherited method from the uh, object class. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment it out for a moment to show you exactly why we have uh, written this and overridden. So override is take something I already know how to do, but write a new version, something that I've inherited. So object told me how to do two string. I don't like the way it does it, so I'm gonna write a new version. So let's go into our dice tester program. And we have these two dice, and we're just going to try printing them. So system.out.print uh, line, and we'll do D. And then we'll copy that. Well, I should probably spell it correctly. And we'll print line again. We'll do D20. Now, remember, the default value for both of these was a 1. So if we run this program, we should just expect to see 1 and 1. So I'm going to hit run this file. And you can see the output down here below, and I know the font is pretty low, but what it says here, I'm just going to kind of copy and paste it into the program so the font's a little bit bigger. This is the output. It said yahtzee.dice at 55F96302, yahtzee.dice at 3D4EAC69. Uh, this doesn't make any sense, except if we look at the object class, I'm going to bring that up here real fast. Here we go. So if we look at the object class in Java, again, it has a two string method. And if we go and look at the two string method, it says it returns the class name plus the at symbol plus a hex string of the hash code of the object. And don't worry about what all that means, but this is the method that's getting run. When you say to print something, it always prints the call to the two string for that object. Uh, data members, or sorry, in, um, primitive types are a little bit different, but whenever you print an object, it always tries to print the two string method result. So now that we know that, we say, oh, all right, well, we can go and create a better version of our two string method. So I'll delete these, we'll go to dice. And in here, what we've done is said return, and we just put a square bracket on either side of the value. So it looks like a dice roll. Uh, or a value inside of a square like the dice. So let's try running this again, run file. And now you can see there's a one and a one. So it is rolling our dice the way that we, we thought it should. Uh, let's go to our dice tester and let's try rolling these dice first. So I'm gonna say d.roll, all right? So that is now a method I could call. And how about d20.roll? And you can also see that these the tooltip's popping up, but if I go to it, I get the comment that we put inside of our class. So these block comments we have for each method are very, very useful. Uh, they allow our IDE to help us as we're writing our code. So d.roll. All right, so now we're rolling each die and then we're gonna print the result. Let's do one more test and run it. And we got a two and a 19. If we ran it again, we're probably gonna get different values, four and a 16. So we now have working dice. And the last thing we'll do is we'll just really quickly take a look at the Yahtzee program and how it's changed a little bit. So to play Yahtzee, we want five dice. We want an array of dice objects. And you'll notice here, I don't have the new reserve word. That is because the create dice method is supposed to give me back an array of dice. Well, let's look at the create dice method. So we we'll scroll up a little bit to find that guy. Here it is. So now, we say make an array of dice, create room for five new dice. Now this new reserve word is making room for the spots in the array. It's not actually creating the dice. So what this does is it actually creates five 
null references to dice, but I don't actually have any dice yet. I still need to make the dice separately than making the array. The array was just saying, I want to have five of something. I want to have five dice references, but each of those dice references needs to point to an actual dice. So now we run a for loop and in the for loop, we create five new dice. And these are all going to be of uh, side six because we use the default constructor. Then it returns those dice. Let's go back to our play Yahtzee method. The next thing we do is say roll the dice and we pass the, uh, the dice array as a reference. So let's see how this method's a little bit different. Uh, first, we get the use response, and that's just saying, um, you know, whether or, oh, sorry, that's a reroll method. Skip that. We want to go to the ro roll dice method. Are we going to roll dice or print? Let me remind myself. Let's see. I'll roll the dice, and we re-roll the dice, then we print. Okay, so roll the dice. Now goes through each dice, and it just calls that roll method. So instead of having a random number generator in this method, we just say for each dice, roll it. It makes this a lot simpler. So this is the reason we make objects, is to take some of the complexity in a program and kind of push it down to another file and where we can test it really simply, make sure it works, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. So now for any game we ever make from now on that's going to involve dice, we never need to create that random number generator in our game. It's done one time in the dice class, never need to do it again. All right, now we have this reroll method that does the same thing, except uh, in here we get the user response first and find out if a dice wants to get rolled. But again, we're not doing the random number generator here. Uh, to print the dice is really, really simple now. We just say for each dice. So here we're using an enhanced for loop. So for each dice D in my dice array, print it. And since we wrote that two string method, this now prints it correctly. And let's see anything else in here. Uh, you know, when you check for Yahtzee. So let's actually try playing this Yahtzee game. And hopefully I didn't leave any bugs in it. Hopefully it works. So it says I have two, six, two, four, one. I'm going to keep the twos and try to get Yahtzee there. So K R K R R. Roll them. Then I get, ooh, oh my goodness. I actually got really close. I got four twos. So I'm going to keep, 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 roll, keep. And, oh, I didn't get Yahtzee. It says I lost. But the game works. I'm using the dice class, which is uh, pretty straightforward. But you can see that even though nothing in this class uh, is especially complicated, now this is one little bit complex line. This is one little bit of a complex line, but nothing in here is really complex as a, as a whole. But what it does is it allows me to take some of that complexity out of my Yahtzee program, push it down to the program below and make it Yahtzee program and make this program overall a lot simpler. I hope that you found this helpful. Bye now.